It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with certified financial planners Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being here, friends. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. What are the biggest risks looming over your financial life? Hopefully you don't think about that too often, but from time to time, it's good to consider what you can do to protect yourself from the outside pressures that could derail your financial progress. We're going to unpack that and more on today's episode. It's probably an unnecessary disclaimer, but I've had this, the urge to wade into some of these topics for a long time and uh, we, we might not be able to pull it off really well, but, but yeah, there's, there's just always big financial risks. And these could be reasons why you're hesitant to make certain financial decisions that are actually beneficial to you. So we're going to get into that. If you have questions or have any needs, need any help, we are here for you. Call or text us 574-222-2000. That's 574 2000 online wisemoneyshow.com is where you can find us, submit questions right there, reach out to us, learn more about the show, about the firm, and then all over social media, wherever you're at, we are there as well. Search The Wise Money Show. I, I want to start with a, a quote I recently heard from C.S. Lewis. I think it helps uh, get us started. So here's what he said. We are always falling in love or quarreling, looking for jobs or fearing losing them, getting ill and recovering, following public affairs. If we let ourselves... We shall always be waiting for some distraction or other to end before we can really get down to our work. The only people who achieve much are those, are those who want knowledge so badly that they seek it while the conditions are still unfavorable. Favorable conditions never come. Now, C.S. Lewis is brilliant and just an incredible thinker and philosopher and um, and mentor, if you'll let him. And he speaks here about knowledge. But what if we tilted it and said, those who want financial peace or financial progress or, or, or personal financial freedom so badly that they seek it while the conditions are still unfavorable. Favorable conditions never come. I love it. So it brings me back, Kevin, to something you've said, and I've heard you say throughout my career, is there's always 72 things to worry about. Mm -hmm. And in the in, as a financial geek, sometimes we see these charts of the stock market and how it's performed over long periods of time. But then you've got these little these little text bubbles, really small font, that say at, you know every so often, this was the big headline. Like, this was the big worry that had people frozen or, or scared in their finances. And yet look at how the stock market has overcome all of those things. And if you think about last year, it was an unusual year, 2023. Yes. We, every economist said there's going to be a recession. Okay. So there was that fear. There was the regional banking crisis. The entire banking uh, crisis could all fall, not too big to fail, too small to succeed. <laughs> right. Yep. Um, we had risk of government default. We had risk of government shutdown. We had two wars. Yeah, we had an election that was going to be contentious coming up this next year, which is now. So all of these risks f were weighing on everyone. And yes, were there moments where you could then look at the stock market performance and say, see, see, I told you I, I was I had reason to be concerned. And yet, yet the market moved. And so it just brings me back to, if I think, at a high level. Man, there are some really big issues. Oh my goodness. There are some big financial issues, problems, worries, big risks. Mm -hmm. And yet, and, and and fear often means you'd stop. You just natural, like I just I, you freeze. So, but there's these big risks. And yet, if you're waiting for those conditions to improve, those risks to go away before you start, it's gonna be hard it's going to be hard for you to be financially successful. I agree. Right. And and quite often the opportunities that are created when the fear exists, uh, when everyone else is running for the hills, they disappear as soon as the storm clouds are gone and the sun is shining again. And 
you know, the, the opportunity is, is, is gone. So having courage in your financial life, I think is an important part of financial planning. It's, it's the reason why you have someone who's in your corner with you, a, a guide that's helping you along the way to give you a little bit of extra courage when you're lacking it. Yeah. Maybe give you some historical perspective when you're feeling a little bit uh, narrow in your in your focus or short term in your thinking, and um, so ho- hopefully we can provide a little bit of that today. Um, that you're right. For as long as there have been investors and and people wanting a bright financial future, there's been stuff to worry about, right? Yep. There's been uh, concerns on the horizon. There's been things that could derail your your financial life if you allowed it to. And uh, hopefully we can show you wh- what are the things that you can be doing that are actually within your control. Um, you know, much of what we're going to talk about today is outside of your control. Oh, it is. Yeah. So it's things you're worried about and they're big, but, uh, but they're outside of your control. So then what is in your control? And in the face of these risks, what can you be doing right now, taking action to help mitigate the impact to you just, you know, in case the risk materializes, we're going to go through some of the biggest risks out there. And I'm going to, we're going to make a commitment to you. Not going to be political because this, this show is not a political show. And, and so, and yes, there, you're going to have lots of concerns and maybe issues with what's going on in, uh, in the white house, either now or in the past, or it fears about it in the future, but, but we're talking about finances. Okay. First big risk that we talk about we're aware oh by the way we don't have any great solutions to any of these either okay they're lists they're risk we all live with but social security social security and the big risk of i've been paying into this thing for forever and it won't be there for me or my benefits will be cut or it's going to be insolvent we'll explain what that means so so guys explain the risk of social security insolvency let's talk about some of the solutions they're kicking around but then get to well then how can you insulate yourself from this well the the big there are a few structural problems that haven't been addressed, and there's again people are not tuning in to fi- figure, figure out political solutions, and we don't mm-hmm. have them. Uh, so I I wish we did. I've got some ideas, but the the structurally, Social Security was set up when the life expectancy was in in the early 60s. So you basically would qualify for Social Security. Uh, draw it for a couple of years and die, and the and the I think the first person that uh, took Social Security lived I don't know seventeen years or something ridiculous <laughs> like this. Oh, really? He proved but, the math yeah, wrong right, right out of the I, gate. I, I think it was a she, and and oh. uh, but I mean it's a it's a it's a fabulous story, and just it just goes to show you that these programs and and so I I don't have any problem with a social safety net that makes some sense to me. Uh, but the the unwillingness of the the our elected officials to represent our interests to make changes to these programs because really uh, this the the changes that need to be, be made in social security are similar to the changes that need to be made in your financial life mm-hmm. and if you are willing to make those changes when you're young the pain is much less than if you wait if I, if I don't start saving until I'm 50, the amount of money that I have to save uh, is likely insurmountable mm-hmm. to get me to a position where I will be um, financially independent. That's why 40% of the baby boomers are going to have to work until they die. And you say, well, because they want to. Some of them, most of them, the answer is no. They don't have a choice. They they have They've not ever made the tough changes. So, I mean, isn't it interesting um, how we are all hypocrites? I'll just start with myself. I'm a hypocrite because I will sit here and say, okay, look at Social Security. I know it's the third rail, but for heaven's sakes, can't we just make some slight changes and get the insolvency date from when I'm going to be drawing (laughs) (laughs) to to to, to when you guys are going to be drawing? (laughs) And you you have demographic issues, right? You have fewer people paying into the system when you look at the, the... the numbers, but most, so we're frustrated with the politicians who are unwilling to make those changes in social security, yet we're unwilling to make those changes in our own lives. Because if you, if you say, Hey, I don't like that. The fact that they're unwilling to make the change, I say, well, then make those changes in your life, fix your balance sheet, do actually do the things that you think Congress should do right now, 
fix your balance sheet because if you can improve your balance sheet, the money that you'll need later will be less. Fix your lifestyle to be in to be congruent with your resources. Mm-hmm. And to me, if there's something else that I would work on fixing, I'd fix my health. But yeah, it's a lot. I, th- these are not going to be fun or easy discussions and solutions. So we're going to pick that back up. A lot more to come here on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for being here. This is the Wise Money Show. You're at the Wise Money Show channel. What you're watching right now is our weekly one-hour talk show that airs right here on this channel, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, every Saturday morning, and also on podcasts at the same time, and also on a couple local radio stations at the same time as well, which is why it's an hour long. And yes, it's a talk show and why it's kind of broken up the way that it is. But uh, all throughout the work week, we've got next Y step videos, doesn't matter what they're called, but videos that are 8, 10, 12 minutes long, taking one financial concept, applying it directly to your financial life. Talked about Social Security and solvency probably a half dozen times, um, different kind of approaches to take or different solutions that are being kicked around. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. If you like the content, like the content, we appreciate it. Kevin, that was great. Right as I thought you were going to go into... Uh, an area that could create some adverse reactions. You you then kind of showed humility that hey, this is well, it, 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 we're all we're all living with this. As frustrated as you can be about the uh, the the speck in someone else's eye, yeah. You and, look and, at the I mean, I do. Own. I think about this, and I think, okay, I'm going to take this energy this frustration that I have, and I'm going to apply it to my own Yeah, do life. something productive with so, it. So we're going to pick that right back up. And we, if we can talk about the insolvency and what that looks like and, and, and whatnot. And then I would, let's say the same things, and yet with the, if it can be surrounded in hope, you can do it. Yeah. Right? right. And so, all right, here we go. Well, I mean, the hope- we've seen people do it. Right. You can do it. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. All right. Second segment. How do you manage? How do how do you personally manage some of these outsized financial risks that we all live with? Social security, national debt, scary. These are scary things that will impact you. Well, do you could you, you just sit and worry and wait? Or is there something that you should be doing to help manage? That's what we're helping with right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name's Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studio is Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Stay up to date on all Wise Money content. Find us online, wisemoneyshow.com, and then all over social media, wherever you're at, we are there as well. So yes, these fears that we are all kind of exposed to, these risks, and have no direct control over, what do you do? And, and the risk is, and the reason we're talking about it, isn't because we've got some great solution or that there's easy solutions that you're going to want to hear. <laughs> there are solutions to you personally. Mm-hmm. However, yeah, I guess what can you be doing? What action can you take to help mitigate these risks? The first one, Social Security. Insolvency. We we didn't really define what it means. So Josh, yeah. can you can you do that? Well, I mean, generally speaking, insolvency is just an inability to pay your debts. But when you apply this term to the Social Security Administration, they have obligations, they have promises that have been made to you and millions of other Americans as you've been paying into the system with the hope that someday you'll be the recipient of, of the goodness of that plan. Insolvency just means they reach a point where they can't pay all those obligations. And it does not mean that suddenly Social Security is just completely bust and it goes away. That's where that's where the fear comes in. That's where a lot of people's minds go to. They think social security is not going to be there for me. I, I mean, how, how many times have you heard that phrase? Oh yeah, right. And the the reality is that all the forecasts, which you know, for years um, we've been told about the year twenty thirty five that's coming. During some of our financial crises in in recent history, when we go into some deep recessions and stuff, sometimes the the date creeps forward because they. Their forecast of what kind of tax revenue is going to be coming in, it, it's reduced. But 2035, the year 2035, has been kind of a, a relatively consistent year that we hear most often. And at that time, what they're forecasting is that Social Security, the revenues that are drawn in from the taxes that they collect, 
won't be enough to pay 100% of the benefits that are going out the door. And uh, the, the forecast would suggest that it would be something closer to about 75% or so. So in other words, they're going to get tax revenue to cover 75 cents on the dollar. That's not zero cents on the dollar like maybe you feared before. Yeah. Um, so keep that in mind. But what it means is that one piece of your retirement may not be as robust as you once thought it was. And if that's the case, then, you know, we again, we want this to be a show that brings some hope to you. And to me, the hope is, and the reminder, the encouragement that we would offer is that there are things that you can do to make your own retirement more secure. And we would tell you that whether it's some other shock to your system, your, your financial system beyond Social Security. Maybe it's a health concern or something like that. You can try to get yourself more ready to be able to be insulated from these types of things by pulling the levers that are, are at your disposal, so, making the changes that are, are possible for you. Here's the two most common solutions that ha they've been talking about. And I, I share Kevin's, um, yeah, frustration and hypocrisy in that, oh, gosh, politicians, please just make a choice here and so that we can all move on with our lives and stop worrying about this, fix this thing. And yet, how many of us are unwilling to fix something that we know needs to be done? It's just going to be hard. The solutions they're kicking around, and I, I, those are with a small S, not capitalized, because they're not great. It increased the amount of tax you pay into Social Security. Right now, you pay FICA, 7.65% of that 7.65%. It's the it's six point two of that seven point six five that goes to fund Social Security, and it's up to a wage limit, one hundred and sixty eight grand this year. So you pay that after if you have earnings above one hundred and sixty eight grand, you stop paying into the Social Security. So they could lift that lift that gap. That's that's one. Um, by the way, your employer pays the same thing, so they match. So it's twelve point twelve point four going in. Well, one of the big solutions they're saying, hey, if we just increase that two percent, so instead of twelve percent going in, 14 percent going in, solved. That's what they're saying. That's one. And then the second is delaying Social Security and pushing the age back. OK, well, you actually can control both of those right now. Increase what you're saving in your 401k by 2 percent. Does that solve it? Does that mean I no longer need to worry about Social Security? No. Will it help? Yeah. It might be forced on you here in like eight years, 10 years. You might be forced to. Again, FICA is forced. That's what the F stands for. I'm just kidding. Uh, so <laughs> you won't have a choice. Well, you have a choice now. Maybe increase it 2%. Maybe stress test your plan. And Kevin mentioned health right before we got cut off here. And why health? Well, it could. It, it has a, a tremendous benefits, especially with fear and anxiety. But you could work longer. Well, I don't want to. Well, you could. And what if soon Social Security rules are such that you're forced to wait longer to get a full retirement or whatever. And this could be a solution. Well, I've, I've been wanting to retire at 62. And when I do that, my full Social Security gets reduced a little bit. And that's what I take. I built my retirement plan on that. Well, if they reduce benefits or if they push things back, you just pushing your retirement date back a couple of years could actually equate to about the same income. So those are two. And you might not like it. And I don't like them either. But they're in within your control right now. Yeah, I would think big picture, like if I if I said, okay, work on your health today so that you instead of retiring at 62, you could you could you'd be able to work till 64. And you say, I just I just don't like what I'm doing. I say, sweet, find something that you like to do mm -hmm. and do that mm -hmm. and get paid for it. I I was in Nashville and I was riding in an Uber and uh, the guy was a, a an HR director in a hospital system. This is a high powered dude, and he um, he's driving my Uber, taking me to the airport. So I, I'm 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 fascinated by uh, these these folks, and I mm -hmm. always have my list of questions that I ask him. But as he was talking, he's like, "Yeah, well, you know, I retired, and I found that I was sleeping too much and watching too much TV and drinking a little too much, and so I needed structure. So I st now I drive five days a week, and he he wanted to have some structure, some meaning, some purpose. But the thing that 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 
money that he's earning allows him to do. He didn't need it, but it allows him to do some things that they hadn't planned on doing as a family. That's so, cool. So, so because he's kept his health and 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 stayed current with his health, he was able to respond and do some really cool things. I'm like, well, that would be the thing to say. Hey, what do I control? I don't control what the rich men north of Richmond do with Social Security. Do they move it from from 62 to 70 when I can start drawing? Do you know what are the what are the things that they are going to change? We don't know. Um, I do believe it's going to take some sort of crisis. Yeah. Probably. So and I don't. So I, I mean, what kind of life is that to go through life rooting for some sort of crisis so things can get fixed? <laughs> so you say, nope. I'm I'm going to control the things that I can control. I can work on my health. And you you might say, well, I've got genetic things against me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's not. If it was easy, everyone would be super healthy. Well, let's throw another thing into that same category. What could you be doing today that gets you more prepared? for tomorrow. And I, I would point to your budgeting activity as well. Yep. I, I'd ask you, well, how much flexibility do you have in your monthly budget? Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you needed to, for some reason, maybe you change jobs and you take a, a pay cut in the process. Maybe you go from one in, or two income family down to one income family. Something changes. How nimble are you financially? How, how much could you adjust and, and adapt? Um, making cuts where where you're you're capable, that discipline, that habit, that skill, I would say, is something that you want to be refining throughout your working career because it may come in awfully handy when you get out there to retirement. Mm-hmm. You know, when we talk about Social Security only being able to pay out seventy five percent of the benefits, that doesn't mean that your whole budget gets cut by twenty five percent. It's just one of your streams of income. Hopefully you'll have multiple in retirement. One of them gets a haircut. So there may be some some percentage of the family budget that needs to get squeezed, needs to get trimmed a little bit. And the question is, how skilled are you at doing that? Mm -hmm. How much rigidity did you put in place in your financial life leading up to retirement versus flexibility, the ability to adjust and and pivot as necessary. It's an important skill, and you don't have to wait until retirement. You don't have to wait until Social Security is insolvent to get that skill built. This risk of Social Security parlays right into the next big risk, and that's the one that we're going to hit next, and then we'll share, all right, here's the things that you can do to help insulate yourself if this risk manifests itself. So we've got that more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. All right, good stuff. Two segments that was on Social Security, so we've got to hit one and one. Yep. And that's fine. So what's one and one? Uh, national debt, government debt. I mean, it's connected directly to this, and, and the solutions might be fairly similar. Mm-hmm. So with a slight, potentially a slight twist on it. So, all right, here we go. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. How do you manage the 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 big financial risks that we all that we all carry, and and yet use that fear, the of, of those risks materializing, use that energy in a positive way, in a way that actually helps you lessen the overall risk. That's what we're helping with right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFC studios. Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of The Wise Money Show is on podcast. Wherever you listen to podcasts, search The Wise Money Show. Subscribe to it there. Follow us there. Like it there. And rate the program there. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so we're talking about these outsized, the, these enormous financial risks that there are no solutions for, at least as of yet. And when you, you, know, like you could stop and think about it and get frustrated, very angry, very concerned, and all of those emotions tend to have a sort of common byproduct, and that is freeze. I stop. And that actually exacerbates the risk for you personally. And, uh, and, and therefore, we want to talk about those, these risks and then encourage you to take action then, because taking action, the right action, can help limit the impact. Now, I, we get the question all the time about Social Security. And earlier in my career... I, and this is an opinion, guys, but early in my career, it was, well, it's possible. So let's just stress test, let's budget, and let's increase contributions. All those things that we share are in your control. And then yet, since 2020, 
I have felt more strongly that it's unlikely they will they will let Social Security go insolvent. And because in, in during COVID, we played this game where we shut the economy down and uh, and then quickly scrambled to print a whole bunch of money and did unbelievable, took unbelievable financial measures because of how it was going to destroy the economy. So to me, not that I think allowing Social Security benefits to be cut by 25% would destroy the economy, but it would have significant uh, economic impact. If, if say, uh, someone had a thousand dollars of social security coming in and then it was reduced to 750 well that 250 that's missing can't be spent on amazon it can't be spent at walmart it can't be spent on the new iphone and therefore it's going to have an economic impact my guess is they will have will face a crisis and they'll make some changes that parlays right into the second risk and that is national debt the amount of debt that we have, if you think about it, it can be quite concerning. Now, there's <laughs> several schools of thought on this. Governments are not supposed to balance their budget like the rest of us do. Uh, okay. And uh, governments should carry debt, all of that. Well, it, even if you think that way, well, then what are, are there any parameters? Because it's possible we're stretching, <laughs> we're stretching those parameters right now. So, yeah, it's a big risk. I don't know if you've ever thought this, whether it conjures up that same anger, frustration, and fear? And if so, what should you do about it? Yeah, I don't I don't know that I personally have felt too much of that fear, but I've seen it in the eyes of a lot of people mm -hmm. around us who, mm -hmm. sometimes clients who, depending on what you read, depending on who you listen to, what's YouTube feeding you on a daily basis, uh, that, that kind of thing. Um, man, you, you could find plenty to be fearful about and it often is, it's centered around national debt and just the economic strength of the country. What does it mean for the longevity of our nation? That, that's basically summing up the fear that empires fall. You know, you look back on history, the Roman Empire didn't last forever kind of a thing. That, that's what I'm hearing, essentially. And um, based on that, it, it can cause people to basically throw their hands up and say, there's nothing safe for me to do. You know, I don't trust the the stock market. There's no point in investing. We're all going to be spiraling. And and you can get yourself into a very fearful, depressed mess in a hurry if you let yourself. And it all begins by looking at the the national debt. And I, I'll be honest, like when I think about the national debt, it, it is alarming. It's crazy how much it has increased. I mean, I remember back to... Uh, the financial crisis in 2008, Mike, you and I were doing a lot of client events to try to educate people on what was happening and and how we're going to get through this a, as a nation, but you as an individual, that sort of thing. And we were pointing to the national debt at that point. Mm -hmm. And I remember when it crossed $8 trillion and then got to $10 trillion, well, it was only about nine years later and it doubled. Yep. Like the, the the speed that it is is ramping up at uh, the the government has taken a philosophy that says when we're in a crisis, it's the government's job to step in, borrow money, and stimulate the economy and everything. That is existing. That thinking is existing even when we're not in a crisis now. Yeah, and and I say that's where I go to first. Is I feel like one of the <laughs> one of the byproducts of this risk is next time we face a crisis. Uh, go, you know, the government may may get to a point where it's uh, actually we we have fewer tools, or we're we're not able to provide the economic support, or put a floor in, or whatever. I I remember during the 08 time frame when the U.S. and Treasury pulled out some unbelievable stops, and and the fear was, wow, this is really appears it's going to help. Are we setting a precedent? And we've seen two other crises since then, and yes. Uh, it, it sort of it has, and so, yeah, that's that's concerning. So, so how do you take this fear and this energy, and apply it in the right direction? Mm -hmm. To me, and the first thought is shoring up your own balance sheet. And gosh, I guys, I know how tone deaf that sounds. Uh, that's really helpful, Mike. Have you not seen inflation over the past couple of years? <laughs> have you not seen how interest rates have spiked and how hard that is? 
to manage and keep things, keep your financial house in order when that's going on? Yes, I have actually. It's extremely hard. And I feel like Many people have been lulled into complacency and all of a sudden it's hard and there's complacency with that hardness now, as opposed to uh, a a can do, a hopeful, and I can do this attitude and I'll figure this out. And yeah, it's going to require some tough choices, but it's, it's good. And so managing, like having a financial um, operating system, Kevin calls it, so a three bank account system, that's what that's what uh, another term we use, um, where you're managing your budget and saving up for known income expenses and have an emergency fund that's funded, and you're keeping your debt and liabilities in check and making progress on those and funding long-term goals. I, I guess that to me, that's the first defense against this fear. Yep. Yes. Absolutely. Knowing knowing where you stand in your personal financial life and what can you be doing to give yourself strength and stability, um, you, you know, the, the ability to bounce back from the unexpected in, in your financial life, all of that stems from strength on your balance sheet, as, as you just said. And, you know, one of the things that I've done, kind of a mental exercise from time to time, when I think about the, the national debt, I think to myself, well, what's my share of that debt? Have you ever done that? <laughs> hundred thousand. Well, right? I'm looking right at it. It is a hundred thousand, almost a hundred and one. So it's it, it, think about this, and this is one of the things I love that Kevin's often saying that the government doesn't have any money. Correct. Right? They get their money from the citizens, from taxpayers like you and and like me. The government doesn't really have the debt either. They borrowed it on our behalf. <laughs> on our our children's behalf on our parents who are maybe are still living maybe not it they borrowed it on behalf of the country and the country we as citizens are the ones that end up paying it back and if you were to take an extra hundred thousand dollars of debt and put it on your balance sheet it changes the numbers at some level right if if that was a hundred grand on top of your mortgage on top of your student loans on top of your your car loans and everything you'd say man I've got a, a bigger debt balance here than maybe I, I would have otherwise realized. And to me, my response has just always been, okay, that makes me want to have my own financial house in order even sooner, mm-hmm. right? Because sure. there is this debt out there, and maybe it's going to come home to, to roost in the form of higher taxes in the future or some sort of, of obligation or some sort of drag upon your financial life in the future. So I want it to be a drag on a really strong financial future. Right. Mm-hmm. And so to, to me, I just let it serve as motivation to do something great in my financial life today so that I can be more prepared for it in the future. I, I, to me, that's a that's a that's a healthy response. And I would we would encourage you that to, to adopt that own you, that response for yourself and 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 actually, I, yeah, give you hope that it, as hard as it might feel right now, you can can make that progress of shoring up your own financial, your balance sheet, your your present financial position, which is cash flow and, and, and the debt that you have. Work with your certified financial planner, lay it out, and then build strategies to get from where you are to where you should be. All right, we've got more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Yeah, it is. So it's basically $34 trillion now. Yeah, and by the time that's this just airs, just when we started uh, versus when we're yeah it was uh, when recording. we when we started recording it was thirty two trillion <laughs> now yeah, it's thirty four right. and by the time it airs it it will be more than that and and yeah the that is yeah and it, 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 the problem is the the human mind has no capacity to comprehend a trillion Mm-mm. no so. But the ability to compare it against the tax revenue that's supporting it is interesting as well. You know, four point four trillion worth of revenues coming in to support a thirty three, thirty four trillion dollar debt. The math just it doesn't work, does it? Yeah. Well, it's I mean, the four point four trillion is supporting a six point one trillion spending. Spending. Yeah. And so it, it, now, and you say, wait a minute, I can't run my household, and the the. When you look at the currency, because it's fiat, it's, you know, at some point in time, history says that 
we're going to have an, an issue. And so you say, well, when is that going to be? It feels a little bit like some sort of cosmic musical chairs. Like at some point the music's going to stop. And the question is, will I have a seat? Yeah. Because if I do, I can sit down and I'm still, you know. And the other challenge, of course, is, you know, like it or not, uh, we have all benefited from this. Even those in oh my very word. different socioeconomic, oh my word, you know, no matter what socioeconomic spot you're in, you have you have significantly benefited from this mountain of debt. Yeah. Well, and when I so, drive to work and I go past the bike paths and all of the luxurious things that we have in this country, I'm like, well, that's what it looks like when you get thirty four trillion on your credit card. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's a, that's a, you can live pretty sweet. You got some fun toys. Oh right. man! So this one, of course, parlays directly into the last one as well. The last official one that I had listed that we'd hit, uh, and that's okay. The market's going to crash, right? At some point, the market's going to crash. What what should you do about that, or how do you protect against that? All right, here we go. Four segment. Land on the plane. Thanks for being here. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode as well as a lot of other content is on the Wise Money YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, search the Wise Money Show, subscribe to it there, follow us there, and uh, and turn on notifications. So you're made aware every time a new episode, talk show comes out. And then also uh, the other videos, the other content that we air right there on that channel, five every single week in addition to the talk show. So make sure you go to YouTube, search the Wise Money Show, subscribe to it there, turn on notifications as well. We appreciate it. All right. So this daisy chain of these big financial risks that are not, you know, not big, no, massive, massive with very complicated solutions to them um, that I can't figure out. You might not. There's it's sort of this... Um, I think they're making these now, the Rubik's cubes that are like multifaceted now. So because someone, the, you can learn how to solve a Rubik's cube in just a matter of seconds. I've seen it. I've watched that that clip. I would say you Tony. can. I have not disciplined yeah, myself. Because I have not either. <laughs> okay. I, I, I've I've tried. So, but but this is these these problems are you know Rubik's cube esque. You try to turn one color to align it with something else, and something else goes what cattywampus or whatever <laughs> kitty wampus and so it's just complete it's very complicated social security insolvency well what can you do that's out of your control what can you do to to manage that risk well the last one we talked about is is debt and that one josh said he doesn't think about it that much i think about it oh every day probably just it's just it's ah um it's connected to this last one that we're going to hit and that is the well, stock market's going to crash, right? This looming risk of, well, wait a second, the stock market at some point is going to crash. Or maybe if, if you don't use the word crash, you'd say recession might be another. So I've got that risk I've got to live with, right? And I'll take us back to the C.S. Lewis quote that I started with, and that is, conditions are never favorable. So if you're waiting, if you're waiting to make progress, or to get knowledge, as he says, if you're waiting for these distractions to go away and things to be solved, you are going to wait forever because there's always that fear of oh, the stock market could crash, the stock market could drop. So what do you do? What should you be doing to help manage this potential risk? Because it is outside of your control. Yeah, to me, it's, it's not even just manage the risk. It's manage your perception of the risk. To me, becoming educated and more informed about the history of the stock market and how does it really act. Sometimes when you look the boogeyman right in the eye, he's not quite as scary as what you would have thought when he seems to be lurking in the shadows or might be around this corner. There's just more fear involved when you don't understand what might be coming at you. And yes, we've lived through some some stock market doozies, haven't we? Oh, yeah. Some sharp declines in the market that seem extreme, like how will we ever bounce back from this? And yet we have each time. So when, when the stock market is in a decline, I'm quick to remind myself and anyone else who will listen, hey, this is temporary. This is not unusual. It is common, in fact. 
Um, in, in fact, we were uh, looking at this earlier. It's what about seventy eight percent of years in the stock market are positive. Yeah. The twenty two percent that are negative are those scary ones, though, right? But here's the thing. That's just how the year starts and ends. While we're going through the year, most years have some sharp declines in them that are even more temporary. They, they come and go over the span of days or weeks, not stretching for years. In fact, I was looking at a chart um, going back to the early 80s, and during this time, the average calendar year in the stock market had a negative 14.3% at one point or another during the year. And yet, most of the years ended very positively. Yep. So you could have some really scary moments in the stock market that are so temporary that you've already forgotten about them by the end of the year. In yeah. fact, they don't even really show up in most of the, the history books because we tend to just look at, well, what did each calendar year bring in, in the stock market? We don't pay attention to what did some of those individual days or weeks also bring. So when, when you define a stock market crash, um, just, just recognize a lot of people will sensationalize a 14% drop as a crash, like this thing is going to spiral out of control, and yet it comes and goes so easily. And those who can discipline themselves to not get thrown off their long-term game with their game plan, with their investments during these, these speed bumps along the way, they're the ones who are going to have the more f- successful financial future because they're not deterred by the noise that's happening around them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The folks that we've seen, both clients that we serve and have served for a long time and folks that have come to us that have been investing for a long time, the folks that have not deterred from their game plan in the 08 and 09 and 2018 and 2020. I mean, there've been a lot of times when there's been a lot of fear. The antidote to fear is perfect love, right? Perfect love casts out fear. And you think, well, how does that apply to my financial life? Um, but I, 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 I think you know what you it's it is a feature of the stock market it's going to go up and down and we don't know um where the next 360 points on the Dow are going to be but we know where the next 36,000 points on the Dow are going to be mm-hmm. and that's what we are are using and and we believe that in order to hedge against inflation and taxes, the best way to do that is to be invested in assets and to be invested in the very best companies and the most well-run companies in the world. So mm-hmm. that's what you have to have exposure to. Yeah. So the first sort of defense against this risk or or, or the way to address it is to be absolute and and have some uh, or, or some resolute, uh, so some resolve about, no, 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 look at the patterns. And yes, volatility, it's, it's a feature of the market. And yet, um, pullbacks have always been temporary. And I, so I would couple that with completely agree and couple that with making sure that you've got the right investment strategies. And oftentimes when you're working with your certified financial planner, if they're doing comprehensive financial planning, they're going to help you build investment strategies that are both offense and defense. So don't think of this as a football team. Think of this as a basketball team, or I would say hockey, because Hockey's so much better, um, but you you've got you know whether when you've got the puck, these are the guys that are playing offense trying to score. When you don't have the puck, these are the guys that are playing defense trying to keep the puck out of the, out of their own net, right? And it just it changes on a flash. And if you say, well, why did they just dump it in? They had control. No, we're not going to talk about that right now. That's strategy, okay? <laughs> but y- your CFP is going to help you build a finan- a an investment strategy multiple strategies, hopefully, that's our that's our belief, that is designed to play that offense and defense. So so one defense against this well, stock market crash is that you're using multiple strategies, that there's diversification, true diversification in there, and that you understand, hey, these are the areas where when when things are going good and we've got the puck, this is the this is the amount of offense that we're able, these are, you know, the amount of goals we could score. And yet we are limiting the potential goals that we can score because when we don't have the puck, we need to be playing defense as well. And, and so you don't feel this need that you've got to course correct every you know time your emotions change. So having the right investment strategies. And the last one, guys, if I can monologue here, is then where that risk really, really, really is felt. 
is as you approach retirement or in retirement. I don't, I don't care how savvy of an investor you are. That first bear market after retirement feels different. Mm -hmm. It's just different. And so ensuring that that diversification, the risk, the investment strategy, strategies that you're using, they evolve with your financial plan. They're connected to your financial plan. So as you get to retirement or you're in retirement, you've got an investment strategy. We call it personal pension plan that's set up and designed for, Hey, yeah. What if we see a pullback in the markets here? How do you, how do you get through it? Anything you guys would, would add here to the fear and the risk? I, I would just point you back to the relationship with your certified financial planner is more than just trying to eke out a little bit better rate of return or some tax savings along the way. It, it At the end of the day, it is, it's almost an insurance policy to make sure that you don't accidentally have some sort of self-sabotage going on yeah. where your own fear takes hold and you end up in a ditch because you you did something that was self-defeating in some way. To, to me, having a guide that you can trust, who you believe has your best interest at heart and wants to see your long-term goals realized, that's that's got to be someone that you have in your corner with you for times like this when you're facing fears of risks that are out of your control. They'll help keep you focused on the things that are in your control. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. That is all the time we have for today. On behalf of Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn, all of us at Corhorn Financial Group, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.